Welcome back to LabVIEW Basics. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub. And in this section, we'll talk about data flow. Data flow is a programming paradigm where the execution order of a program is determined by the flow of data. So let's jump into LabVIEW and see how that works. From my LabVIEW getting started window, I'm gonna press Control N to bring up a new VI and Control T to tile it. So let's create a simple VI that adds two numbers. I'll start by placing my numeric controls in the front panel. So I'll right click to bring up the controls palette, choose numeric and control, and I'll place one and place another below it. And I'm gonna label these X and Y. Now I need a numeric indicator for the output. So I'll place that and name it output. So you have two inputs and one output. Now I'll switch to the block diagram and I'll bring up the functions palette and under numeric, I'll choose the add primitive. I'm gonna place this on my block diagram. And now I need to wire it up. So if I hover over the X control on the block diagram, you'll see my cursor changes into a spool of wire when I hover over the terminal. So I'll click that and click once to start creating a wire and you'll see now a dashed line that follows my cursor. And when I hover over the add primitive, I can connect that wire to one of the terminals. So the terminals on the left are the input to that add primitive. So I'll click, and now I have a solid orange wire where my numeric is connected to the add. So I'll repeat that for the Y control, and then the same thing for the output. I'm gonna wire the output of the add primitive into the um, output indicator. So once I do that, my VI is ready to run, and I'm going to hit the run button and run the VI. So it looks like nothing happened, but we have zero, zero, and zero. So let's add some numbers. So here's a one and a two. And if I click run, now you can see the output is three. So let's make this a little bit more complicated. I'm going to click on my add and just control C to copy and control V to paste. I'm gonna create another copy of that add. And then I'm going to hover over its terminal and create a wire and I'm gonna come up to the wire that's coming out of our existing ad. I'm gonna connect that. And you can see when I do, it creates a little node there. Now I'm going to wire the other input of the ad uh, to our Y input, uh, our Y control. And then I'm gonna delete this chunk of wire and rewire the output of the second ad to our output indicator. So now we're taking our two inputs, we're adding them, and then we're adding the Y input again to that output. So we should get X plus Y plus Y. So run it and see, sure enough, we get five. So there's two functions happening here. This ad's executing and this ad, but what order do they execute? Well, since LabVIEW is a data flow language, every node on the block diagram can only execute once all of its inputs are ready. So let's look at this in reverse order. When can our output be updated? Well, there's one input to it, and it's coming from this add primitive. So the output can only output the new data when this add primitive is done executing. So in order for this add primitive to execute, it depends on input from this other add primitive and also from the Y control. Well, the Y control is ready to go immediately. It's just a control that we typed a number into. So this primitive can execute as soon as this one is done executing because it's waiting for output from this first add. This add depends on the X control and the Y control. So when we run our program, these two controls will output data. Then this add can execute because all of its inputs are ready. Then our final add can execute once it has the output from the first add. And then our output indicator can be updated. To see this in action, we can turn on what's called highlight execution mode, and this is a great way to debug your code. So I'll click on this little light bulb, and you'll see it light up. So now highlight execution is enabled. And when I quick click run, you'll see data flowing from the controls, through the wires, through the functions, to the output. So let's run it, and we'll see X and Y executed first. Then we can see the first add executes, then the second add, and then our output. Now. What if we create a copy of this entire thing? I'm gonna highlight it all and hold control and click and drag. Now I have a copy of all of my controls and indicators and my functions. So if I run this, what order does it execute in? Well, 
we can trace this backwards and we can say this ad or this output depends on this ad, which depends on the first ad, which depends on our controls. And the same thing's true over here. But what about this output versus that output? Well, since there's no dependency between the two chunks of code, we don't really know what order they're going to execute in. And if you have a multi-core computer, it's possible that these two chunks of code will execute at the same time on separate cores, because LabVIEW is smart enough to divide up your code that can be divided up amongst different cores. So if we turn on highlight execution and we hit run, we'll see that in this, this time, the code on the right ran first, and then the code on the left. But that's not always going to be the case. The real answer here is we don't know. One time it might execute in that order and the other time in another order. Or maybe this first add primitive will execute and then the add primitive on the right will execute. And then it'll go back to the left and then back to the right and then execute the outputs. So if the order of execution doesn't really matter, we can just let things execute in whichever order they want. But it often does matter. And when it does, we'll use wires to force execution order using data flow. Now in our last section, we talked about the error wire. And the error wire is a common way to force execution order um, by passing the error wire through all of your VIs. So let's jump to an example here. This example opens a file, writes hello world, and closes it. And you can see the bottom row uses error wires to connect these three VIs, the open file, write to text file, and close file VIs. This forces them to execute an order because we have to open the file before we can write to it, and we want to write to it before we close it. In the next section, we'll cover some tips and tricks for finding what you're looking for in LabVIEW. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.